So moving on, uh, let me uh, invite uh, Dr. Kave Bazargan. He will be talking to us uh, uh, regarding, it is associated with uh, integrity mostly, but how we tackle research misconduct, not only after we identify it, after publication, but before that. Kave, floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so I'll be talking about um, research misconduct or research integrity. Quick word about who we are. We've been in scholarly publishing about 35 years. Um, we are based in UK and in India, in southern India. We started as math typesetters in the old days, but move on to having uh, platforms, end-to-end -end platforms for, for, for publishing. Forgive me, I couldn't resist putting a video of, of, of uh, our staff in India. They were locked up for three years for COVID, but then they had a big party, and this, uh, believe it or not, these are all our staff in Kerala. So we are very proud. Not only are they great at publishing, but they're great dancers too. So I can't <laughs> stop looking at these, uh, so that hopefully that won't distract you, it'll, uh, it'll, it'll, uh, it'll go soon. Um, one of the things we are proud of is, is that we have no dependencies on any third party, so everything, all our software is written in-house, um, either uh, open software or we've written it ourselves. We have no dependencies, even Adobe, if Adobe go bust tomorrow, that's fine, we can still produce our PDFs. Um, now, this presentation throughout, I've put little QR codes uh, if you want to go to a, any of the links. But better still, um, I've got, I've put up the, a PDF of this presentation uh, online. So if you down, if you're interested, you don't have to take notes, you can download this and lots of clip, clickable links on there. And, the, and the, 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 the PDF, if you go to River Valley IO News, you can download that if you want. Otherwise, enjoy the show, hopefully. Um, so research integrity. It's not all bad. There are different levels of research misconduct, if you like. There are accidental errors. Someone might put the wrong image in, for example. So you can't, you can't blame them for that. Uh, but then you get into uh, emphasizing the, the, if you like, the positive results, p-hacking, etc. Reusing or editing data, that's mm, a little bit not really good. Too much self-citation or citing irrelevant papers, not good at all. Up to the extreme things like buying authorship. Yeah, definitely bad. Spoiler alert, if you like, um, paper mills, so-called paper mills, are really clever. They're making a lot of money and they're ahead of the game. So whatever we when close one door, they'll find another door. That's what we've found. And if you think your society or your publishing area is, is immune, it may be that, and hopefully it'll be always immune, but you never know. As soon as some, you close one door, another one is open. For example, one journal might be attacked. And as soon as they, the, the, these guys find that the, 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 if you like, the retract, the uh, acceptance rate goes down, they'll suddenly go to another journal. So you never know what's going to happen. We really got to be alert here. There is no one button solution. If someone comes to you and say, he, he, you know, come with us, we have solved it. Even if we say that, it's not going to work forever because next year I can guarantee you it'll be different problems. Okay. And finally, always a human has to be involved. You cannot press a button and say, this is not good. This is, this is uh, something might be suspicious, but a human has to look at it. So, you know, AI can help, but it's not going to, it's not going to uh, um, solve it for you. The bad guys, there are well-organized paper mills and there are ads you can find. If you go to your Facebook, for example, and type in Scopus or Web of Science, you'll find lots of ads where you can buy authorship. Um, 
and here we are. We've got a we've got second author available, <clears throat> no problem. There are lots and lots of them. Um, if you go on, I think on if you go on uh, Twitter, authorship author for sale, you'll find them there. They're making huge profits. So authorships, uh, if you want to be an author, it'll depending on what the impact factor etc. is, or if it's uh, what quartile, it'll cost you 300 maybe to 3,000 dollars for the top authorship, if, if you can call it that. If you want citations to your paper, uh, there's something of the order of roughly, from what I understand, something like $50 per citation. Yeah? And they're easy to get. You can get them tomorrow. Um, I do know of, of, uh, um, of someone who's made hundreds of thousands of dollars selling authorships. Okay? So it's big, big business. And unfortunately, some editors and reviewers are taking part, um, so you'll get a few hundred dollars if you pass this, uh, this, this paper through. Who are the good guys, folks? Um, the good guys are the so-called sleuths. There are a lot of these guys doing, you've heard of people like Elizabeth Bick, for example, who's the most famous one looking at uh, um, uh, images. And most of these guys are hobbyists and they're working for they're not taking uh, uh, any money, but they really are doing a good job. Um, they're frequently attacked online. They're even death threats, uh, so some are, are anonymous. Um, but they've really created some interesting uh, data. Some created very good uh, paper mill databases, and these are available if, if, if you want to look at them. I feel we in the publishing industry and these guys were on the same side. They're not trying to <laughs> attack publishing. They're trying to clean up, uh, if you like, scientific uh, research. So we should really support them. Um, our small contribution is that we've made some animations of, uh, 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 of, of images. People like Elizabeth Bick, etc., who have been finding. We've done about 2,000 animation, again, free of charge, just to support uh, these guys. And by the way, that little finger you see, if you download this um, presentation from, from, our, from our site, Revalue.io, or I can send it to you, click on that little finger, it'll go to that, uh, to, to the areas you're, 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 I've talked about. What do we look for? The areas to look for generally, as I say, there's no single solution. We're working on, and other people are working on different areas. Um, Tactical citation, so there's excessive self-citation. Obviously, you can cite yourself because you've done previous work, but if it's excessive, that's not right. You're trying to boost citations. Minimal self-citation, if you're doing a review of, of, of a subject and there are no citations to yourself, that's also a red, uh, if like a yellow alert. How come you didn't do any work in this area? Unrelated references, clearly not right. Citation to retracted references, especially if there are several of them, that's an alert. So all of these are signs we should look at to, and then a human looks at and, and, and then questions whether this, is a, this should be published or not. There are lots of other tricks. Uh, recently, um, the, uh, we, we found there was a trick of uh, um, citations in Crossref, so sneak citations by putting metadata after a publication. You don't change the version of record, but somehow there were <laughs> sneaking citations in the Crossref. Uh, this is um, uh, Guillaume Cabanac. Uh, again, that finger will take you to, to his um, archive paper. Uh, similarly, uh, recently we found a citation I didn't find, but, but you can find that link. Uh, Google Scholar has been manipulated. And Google Scholar is actually used something like 60% of uh, um, institutions looking at the, if you like, the impact of a scholar are looking at Google Scholar. So it's an important area. Things to look for. Emails not matching institutions. It's, it's not always wrong, but it's, it's an alert. Okay, so there have been cases of, uh, say, an India or, ch or, 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 or China uh, suffix to an email, but actually it's a U.S. institution. How come that? How, how, how is that? Again, a yellow flag is unusual collaboration amongst different countries. So several countries which normally wouldn't collaborate, but suddenly you've got a, a, an experiment in the lab with all these people, say from 
Iran, China, the US, UK, uh, etc. It's important, of course, we shouldn't discriminate. Of course, there are collaboration between different countries. But again, these are all little flags that we, we need to look at. What, one thing we could do is to examine, something we're doing is examine data from past collaborations. So for example, have these two countries or institutions, have they collaborated in the past or not? If not, why suddenly are they doing this in incredible work between them? Um, Look at previous output from institutions. So we've got uh, some, several people from one institution. What research has come out of this institution in the last three years? If it's minimal, then that's another flag. Let's look at that. A human should look at that uh, um, um, submission. You might find a large collaboration uh, with several people but one of the authors has never published before. That's unusual. Usually someone publishes a few papers, then they collaborate, collaborate with others. As I say, these are all different signs, uh, and we need to look at all of them to, to, to find, um, to, to see whether there's a, there's a problem, something is suspicious or not. Um, obviously, authors look at their background, discipline. If a biologist, psychiatrist, and architect are writing a paper, that, is, that doesn't sound right. So this is all metadata. We're looking around the data. Then there's data, the actual the art article itself. Of course, we can look at authenticate or similarity check and see if this has been plagiarized from somewhere else. The, one of the problems here is there is not enough data in, in uh, authenticate for uh, articles that have been, say, uh, uh, translated from other languages. There's a lot of body. For example, in Russian, there's a lot of text, and uh, um, uh, uh, Anna Balkina has done a lot of work in this, uh, so that will not be picked up. So if you take a Russian paper and, and have it translated, I think it won't pick it up. You've heard of tortured phrases. Um, uh, this is where you, you take something, you might copy it from somewhere, but then put it through a software so that it changes the wording and I think it doesn't pick it up. Unfortunately, this, this this leads to funny phrases you might have seen before. Again, this link will take you there. Um, so, for example, breast cancer has changed to bosom peril. Okay. Uh, fuzzy logic becomes fluffy rationale. Now, you might think, oh, yeah, it might have happened once or twice. Well, what happens? Well, uh, and by the way, it's uh, Guillaume Cabanac and Cyril Labbe, who did an analysis, and they've got a list of around uh, 4,700 phrases that has been, have been picked up uh, in, in, in this way. Um, now, you might think, oh, well, it doesn't happen that often. Go to Google Scholar and put in fluffy rationale. There are, I th there's more now, about 970 papers published with fluffy rationale. Of course, some of them might be referring to fluffy rationale, a few of them, but this is, I mean, it, it really, it's, it's funny, all these phrases, but sad at the same time. So, again, we've, so, we can, it's not that difficult. You have a list of these, it's open, it's, it's in a CSV file or API, you can pick these up, but, I can tell you that as soon as we've picked these up, the guys are going to change. They're going to go to an, another way of rephrasing them. So we've got to keep <laughs> the, uh, um, you know, up to date. Peer review. There are many cases of duplicated peer review. So if you look at the peer review, as long as it's open, it has to be open, of course, uh, maybe anonymized open peer review, you find that the same phrases or the same paragraph has been used for peer review, obviously a sign to, to look at something. Minimal preview, if there's a, just a, a sentence saying this is fine for publication, again, we should question whether that's a real peer review or not. One thing to look at is whether the author and the peer reviewers are using the same IP address, right? Because someone next door is doing their peer review. These are, again, a multitude of things we can look at, and all of these we've just got to keep looking at the next stage, what's coming next. You've probably heard of hijacked journals, these are where uh, a journal has, has got, 
stop publication. Someone comes in and says, yeah, we'll take that, set up a site, very similar, put the same URL because it's available now, or put a very similar URL, and then they get people to, 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 to uh, submit. Um, they take the APC and publish with no review, and they just publish it. Uh, we've done a lot of work in image misconduct, if you like, um, and the sort of range of things that you see are simple duplication. Um, so what we are doing is, forgive me, I, 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 I missed that if I just go back to uh, simple duplication. Um, So what happens here is these, these look like separate things, uh, you know, diff different graphs, but actually if you take them, once, once you uh, uh, um, superimpose them, you can see actually this was the same, same thing. We are not, the sleuths are finding these, and the software, by the way, that, that finds things like uh, um, um, s several software that finds it for you. But again, that software, it can flag it for you, a human has to look at it and see if, it's, if it makes sense or not. This is where it's duplicated, but it's, the, the, uh, there's a bit of scaling involved. So what we do is you make a negative one, and you can see it's stretched, and this is obviously the same image. Well, so the software will pick this up. You need to make a uh, look at this and see if it is, uh, if it, if it uh, um, if, if it's kosher or not. So here we have another one. Again, the software will pick this up and the author might, in some cases, it's just, sorry, I put the wrong image in. But here you can see, hang on, it's not quite the same. Someone's Photoshopped this. Hmm? So this is where a human has to look at this and say, explain that. That's not quite, that, you know, you've, that doesn't quite look right. And you can see that there's some changes between it. There's lots of cases uh, like that. So this is another one where it, it, again, most of these at first sight, you don't see these. So here, again, duplicate, but clear manipulation between the two because someone thought, oh, well, you know, this would look better if I put another cell in here. This, we don't want this to be published. Um, I'm just going through the different things that we've, we've seen but with uh, our analysis. So, for example, this looks okay when you first look at it, some scan electron micro, my, uh, my, micro, my, whatever it is, microscopy. <laughs> so here we can see, uh, actually, there's a lot of duplication here. If you take that, it's quite, it's quite sort of uh, elegant, actually, the way like it's sort of dancing around, but clearly this doesn't look right. And basically this has been, at first sight you wouldn't see this, but, uh, but, but you do um, when you look further. You, these are three lab photos, and someone looked at this and said, oh, this, this, these seem to be a little bit similar to each other, and you find that, yeah, A and B are exactly the same, but someone thought, yeah, we'll put a couple of three bubbles in here. Uh, so that's uh, hard to explain, I would have thought. Um, there are a lot of animal experiments. I'm going to very, very quickly go through these. The, um, the, the, the thing with animal experiments, actually, we shouldn't be, these are quite, you know, it's cruel to, to use animals and then cheat at the same time. I'm going to jump, uh, yeah. Um, so this is where the, someone's done a plastic surgery, but actually it's the same thing that it's been, uh, uh, it's been photoshopped. I'm going to jump through so that um, there's a lot of cases of just background noise. You find that the background noise here is, um, again, I'm going to, because uh, for, for time, I'm going to go, go through these quickly. Uh, cascading images where you find that several images um, are, this is actually the same image. Yep. So what I'm going to do is, again, there's, there's lots of images. I put these because I thought it's... Um, There's low resolution and high resolution images. Some of these are low res and some are high res. Um, generative AI, this is quite uh, in, in uh, Photoshop, actually, you can say, put me a classic car from the 50s, then put me a, a 
pool filled with blue and it'll do it and put the reflection in, etc. Uh, so again, you can, this is very difficult. I don't know where we're gonna, we're gonna uh, uh, how we're gonna find these. And this is where a cell, somebody took a cell and said, take a cell out and it takes, it takes a cell out of there. So what I'm gonna do is to jump uh, to uh, what we can do short term. So short term, if you look at file sizes, um, a selfie, you take a selfie with your phone, it's about two megabytes. Take a one minute video, it's 10 or 20 megabytes. And a one minute animation is 40 megabytes. This presentation is two gigabytes because I've got lots of animation. An article PDF is of the order of two megabytes as well. So why are we not making bigger PDF files, if you like, with bigger images? So the typical, so uh, we've got lossy compression here. JPEG is a lossy compression. So you can see that this image doesn't look too bad, but when you zoom in, you've got these square patterns. We shouldn't do this with research data. So we should minimize JPEG compression. This is a low res figure, for example. So figures uh, and vector files, as you know, you can, you can zoom in. The more you zoom in, it uh, doesn't matter how much you zoom in, it's, you still got the same, uh, uh, um, same uh, image. So recommendation for figures, use vector files, demine high, high resolution, minimize JPEG compression, except for photographs of uh, scenes. Uh, Upscale PDFs from two megabytes, say 50 megabytes, pr but provide a down sample version if so someone can't do that. Um, demand that the original image is up up uploaded to supplementary data. One thing you can do is to go to Puppeer. Um, so uh, Puppeer is where things are. A Puppeer extension will show you, as soon as you go to one of your files, you will be able to see whether there's a Puppeer um, and there's an institutional dashboard as well. Um, we need to maximize metadata, mandate ORCIDs, credit taxonomy, uh, cross-ref funder registry, which is soon to be uh, replaced by ROR, grant ID when available. So the more metadata you have, the more, um, uh, uh, the, the more chance you have of catching things. And submission dates, at the moment, quite often there's no submission date uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a structured way. Um, if you are any corrections, expression of concern, make sure you deal with them very quickly and set deadlines for responses from authors or institutions and use standard post-publication metadata for correction, etc. That's something Crossref is working on, so we can work with Crossref on that. Institutions to take more responsibility, so I'm going too fast because I need to finish. More responsibility at the moment, they, they, they don't often do that. They need a research integrity officer. Long term, we need to, authors can modify to ensure, right, what we need is structure inside the documents. Um, at, right, right at submission, if you can convert a submission, a Word file to XML, that saves you a lot of time uh, further on. And then we got more structured data. Contextual, once you've got that structure, then you have contextual metadata, uh, sorry, peer review. So these are all the things that we can do uh, in future to make sure that we've got more structure right at the beginning. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Carlo. It's a fascinating, you know, uh, how things can uh, be manipulated. Uh, we have, uh, you know, we can we have a couple of minutes left before we start the next session. Any thoughts? Any experience sharing? Hi, thank you. That was really interesting. Um, I just wondered what your thoughts were on us collaborating more with the sleuths. Just in my experience, so I'm a publisher, and so I often get kind of emails saying, oh, we found this. Yeah. But the, and I agree we shouldn't delay like expressions of concern mm -hmm. and retractions, but COPE does give us very strict kind of guidance on like the process we have to go through, and you can't assume an author is yeah. like, you know, mm -hmm. deliberately mm -hmm. manipulated something until you've got evidence. And I there maybe needs to be some flexibility there about like the time scales involved because you have to be sure that it's manipulated before you can retract. Uh, I agree. Uh, some cases you're, you're not sure, but you know, when something is photoshopped, it's very, it's, it's very easy to say. 
to, to tell that 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 is uh, you know that there's definitely a, a, a case there. I would say sometimes authors take a long time to come back. We should I don't know who you know, whether Cope or whoever sets this, but we should have a time. You know, you have one week or two weeks to 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 respond. Otherwise, it be it'll be escalated. Um, so there's no magic solution, but I agree we have to be sure. Yep. Tiberi Signat from SKS Knowledge Services. I can't stop thinking of uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers report on the cost of not sharing the data. Is there any reliable report you are aware of or initiative on, on that for the total cost of dealing with paper mills? A reliable report or something to inform? Them? I don't. Someone will have, and I have connections with the SLU too. I can, I can get that for you. Um, yeah, I can't. I don't know about that. Thank you so much. Uh, let's uh, give a big hand to Kaveh. Thank you. Thank you.